I don't, off the top of my head, I don't know. Let's call the uh, Finance Committee meeting to order. Um, we're going to do a couple things today at our Finance Committee meeting. First of all, we're going to hear from the mayor, get his comments on the budget, and then staff will give us uh, some highlights of, of the budget. And this is going to be a look at the big picture on the budget. And we won't be necessarily getting into the details today. This will just kind of give us a little bit of an overview. We'll have plenty of time to get into those details later. And in that regard, uh, we're going to have at least two work sessions where the full council can, can participate. Uh, and we'll have a third and a fourth if necessary. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the mayor to get his comments on the 2015 budget. Thank you very much, Anderson. Uh, as I work with the city staff to prepare my final budget as mayor, I would like to note <coughs> that over the past four years, city spending has remained flat and the property levy has remained essentially flat as well. Other than increases for growth, the only notable increase made in the tax levy over the past years was an additional $147,000 listed for infrastructure. The number of employees and level of services have also re remained consistent. My 2015 budget follows my theme of being cautious with the tax dollars. The general budget is proposed at $15,530,000 which includes the transfer of $1,632,598 for capital expenditures. Of that, $945,000 is proposed for cash-funded projects and the remainder to purchase equipment. The wastewater treatment fund is proposed at $11,291,884,000 for 2015 and accounts for the recently adopted rate structure. Total capital improvement proposed for 2015 are $2,080,306, which is actually less than what was recommended for 2014. Additionally, the property level is the same as 2014, $4,054,028 plus $147,000 for streets. The increase of $61,000 comes to increased valuation of new, pro new construction. The city will receive only a nominal increase of approximately $30,000 in local government aid in 2015. Transfers from Rice Hospital and Wilmer Utilities are not anticipated to increase. The budget is actually slightly lower than the operating budget for 2014. While the city has stable operations, we are falling behind in maintenance of infrastructure, our Rose Parks building and other facilities. Since 2012, the city staff has been trying to plan over a five-year period for capital expenditures. The city has a backlog of deferred maintenance, and the city council must balance the funds available with the needs. Streets are critical, but so are buildings, parks, and stormwater improvements. There is a need to have reliable funding. In 2015, the city is actually transferring less to capital reserve than in 2014 and proposing fewer projects. We have increased the dollars allocated for payment management, but will increase the debt service. But that will increase the debt service. We have also increased funding for parks, maintenance, in anticipation of needs identified in the ongoing park study. We are using the last of the local auction sales tax funds. The department director has actually identified needs in excess of $2 million for infrastructure beyond pavement management due to available funds. The level of cash funded project in 2000 or 2015 has been scaled back to only $945,000. As the council reviews the budget and tax levy in the coming months, I believe the council should start planning for the long term and consider ways to provide sustainable funding to improve the city's infrastructure. Over the past four years, I have proposed frugality with the city's tax dollars, and Wilmer remains one of the lowest tax regional centers. The 2015 budget is no different. I want to thank city staff for their assistance in preparing the city budget, 2015 budget, and I appreciate the input of the city council as well. I know over 
the coming weeks and months, there will be opportunities for the council and citizens to review the proposals in more detail. And I look forward to the discussions. Is, are there any questions? I'll turn it back to you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to staff to give us some of the highlights uh, of the of the proposed budget. And they have a PowerPoint, and it is also in our computers. You may not have had a chance to download it yet. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, sure. As we take a look at the 2015 budget, as the mayor stated, um, you know, the city's in, in uh, good financial state shape in that our revenues are stable, but our revenues aren't increasing. The revenues are flat. Um, in 2015, we'll receive a minimal increase in local government aid, or LGA. We're receiving only approximately about $30,000 in increase in local government aid. In 2014, we had an increase of $300,000 in our local government aid, but in 2015, we'll see about a $30,000, $35,000 increase in local government aid. We're also seeing a small increase in our valuation, approximately $61,000, and that's attributable to new, new construction, but we're not really seeing a lot of our other revenues um, increasing. We're also continuing to see increased costs for infrastructure maintenance, and that's kind of a twofold problem. I mean, some of that is our, our infrastructure is aging. Um, our parks and our uh, park equipment in, um, has been aging. Streets are aging. Um, we have a new wastewater treatment plant, but we have aging lift stations and aging interceptors going into that that are being replaced. And then there's deferred co uh, there are the, the deferred costs. Um, back in 2009, 10, 11, when the city was receiving uh, reductions in local government aid or unallotments, a lot of um, what the city did to balance the budget during those times was to defer maintenance and defer costs. And so we're seeing the, the kind of the coming together of those and our, and our uh, capital needs are increasing. For the 2015 proposed budget, our general fund operating budget is a little over 15 and a half million that's being proposed, and that does include a transfer of about 1.6 million for capital improvements. That's a, actually a lower budget and a lower capital transfer than was proposed in the 2014 budget. Capital improvements, um, we have about a two million. We have two million dollars um, for capital improvements, special revenue, and internal funds. 1.7 million, almost 1.8. Debt service, uh, 2.5, nearly 2.6 million, and that's paying for past projects. And then our enterprise fund, our wastewater, our wastewater fund, is the next largest fund for about 11.3 million, and that is that does include um, the new rate structure that the council adopted. And the total of all the funds is 33.2 uh, 33, uh, million. Operating levy. The proposal uh, for the general operating levy was to keep the levy uh, essentially the same. So you see a slight increase there of 61,294, and that's for general operations, um, but that is uh, attributable to the new growth, new construction. Um, we have continued to set aside 147,000 as the council um, has directed in the past couple of years for an operating level levy to go towards our street improvement program and to increase some of the dollars being spent for street improvements. Now I'll ask um, Steve Okins to kind of explain this slide. It's a little difficult to see. I realize it's a little bit um, busy up there, but we did a comparison of property tax and, and data from similar size communities. And I think uh, the finance director, he put that together and he's the best to explain that, I think. Uh, the city has uh, used this slide in the past. There's been a couple years since we haven't, but this is uh, comparing the city of Wilmer to similar size uh, regional centers in the state of Minnesota. Um, it, it lists the uh, county portion, city portion, school, and special districts in the it, which make up the total tax levy for the citizens of the city of Wilmer. Um, we put it in order of city rate. If you'll see there that the uh, city of Wilmer uh, is at the bottom of the uh, regional centers that we listed here, and these are the same regional centers that we have used in the past as far as comparison purposes, and the city's portion of the overall tax rate is 33.98. Uh, it used to be mills um, per thousand dollars of valuation. Um, but uh, we do also have data, and it will be out on the website as far as comparison to uh, county seats within the southwest Minnesota, as well as uh, taxable uh, communities that have the same kind of tax base. Um, and we have done that comparison as well. It's not in the PowerPoint presentation, uh, but it will be on the website uh, as far as the ability of the community to, uh, to pay the property taxes. And then this uh, shows what our kind of history has been. Local government aid, um, LGA, is one of the largest sources in the city of Wilmer's general operating budget. 
Um, in 2011, and you can see in the 2011, that was probably, that was the last year of where the city was allotted funds and then there was a process of unallotment from the state and there was a, a, a real difference in how much was allotted to the city and how much the city would build its budget upon and then what was actually received from the state. Um, but what you can see over the past five years, I mean, kind of from 11 to 15, is um, seeing a leveling off of the local government aid. You can see again, you see an increase there from 13 to 14, um, where in last year in the 2014, with a legislator putting some additional money into local government aid, uh, that uh, we increased about 300,000, but still lower than the than the local government aid that we were receiving back in 2011. And then in 2015, you can see again just that slight increase there. But you can actually see too where our uh, property levy has been kind of creeping up um, and coming closer and closer to actually matching the amount of the local government um, aid that we receive. And those are two of the largest uh, sources of revenue for the city. Kind of breaking, and again to show that I guess a little bit even more is our, that. Uh, for the general fund revenues and how those are distributed and where the where the source of general fund revenues is for uh, we receive about four four and a half million dollars in current taxes property taxes primarily and that's about 30 percent of the city's overall budget licenses and permits represents only about two percent um, intergovernmental aid which includes local government aid which is about uh, which is over four million of that um, represents about 33 almost 34 percent of the city's operating budget and then service charges at 5%, fines and forfeitures, a very small number there, less than 1%. Um, interest earnings and reimbursements, and of course, over the years, interest earnings have certainly gone down and, and for the city as well as others, and that's about 6%. Um, the other financing sources at about 2.8, almost 2.9 million, um, that represents about 18% of the budget. The two, the sources primarily there would be transfers from Rice Hospital as well as from the Wilmer Municipal Utilities back to the city payment in lieu of taxes. And then we are also um, using a bit of the fund balance, and this is from the 2013 <coughs> budget year of 645,517, so about 4% to balance the budget and to use, to, to use that funding. This just shows you graphically how that again breaks out, again showing the kind of the size of intergovernmental aid, local government aid, um, property tax, and other financing or the, the additional transfers. And then looking at the, um, the converse of that of general fund expenditures and how those are broken through, um, broken apart by the different departments. You have administration and that does also include information systems in that at about 5% of the budget. Mayor and council, which also incur, um, includes legal services at about almost 3%. Planning and development, 3%. The city clerk, election and assessing another small kind of uh, departments, 3%. Finance department, also below 3%. Our non-departmental expenditures represent about 7%. Our largest um, departments, and this is very typical of cities, are public safety and public works. Um, to combine, they represent about 50% of the general fund operating budget. Uh, the library, um, our contribution to the, to the library system is about 3.2%, and this does, a, for the 2015 budget year, them does, in, does represent an increase in funding. And then community partners are funded at the same level that was funded for 2014 at a, and uh, less than 1% there. And then community education and recreation, um, and that's combined, of course, in a, and a joint powers agreement we have with the Wilmer um, School District for about 1.3 million. And then transfers are about 11% of the budget, and that transfer, again, includes the capital expenditures. And again, you can see how this breaks out kind of graphically on a pie chart to just show you where the largest sources of expenditures are in the general fund. Some of the changes in 2015, um, we're eliminating the um, HR position. It was, a it was a position that was funded in 2014 but unfilled, so we've removed that from the 2015 budget. Smaller transfer to the capital reserve than was done in 2014. <clears throat> um, we've reduced some of our capital purchases and our capital projects because of the, uh, uh, the particularly those that are cash funded. Um, we did increase dollars for pavement management, which is will be funded through debt services, debt service, and and uh, you'll see later in the capital program um, that we did also um, as we get into that um, later um, increase some funding for parks and recreation. So in looking at our capital planning, just to remind the council that we've uh, discussed this a, a few times, but we uh, try to plan over a five-year horizon. We have some criteria that we try to look at on whether something is a legal mandate um, and what's the cost of, of not complying. 
whether we're maintaining our existing assets, is it going to uh, maintain an existing asset or improve an existing asset? Um, is what we're doing sustainable? Does it enhance our organization's uh, um, efforts to maintain a healthy and habitable environment? Um, is it fair to all? Does the project represent a fiscally responsible decision or some of the criteria we use? Will it reduce or offset costs um, in the future? Is it a critical public safety need or concern? And then we also, um, does it meet some of the city, does it meet city council uh, priorities uh, if those priorities are stated by the council? Um, and the way that we fund our capital improvements is through bonding, which is debt service. So we borrow for that and primarily we use, um, we, we borrow to fund our pavement management. Uh, cash and the sources of cash is that we use unspent reserves from prior years and we un and unspent previous capital allocations. And then special revenues, um, we use the wastewater treatment fund, but those, and of course that, that funding is limited to projects that are in, with wastewater treatment, and so, but that's a special revenue fund. And then local option sales tax, and what we're seeing in 2015 is we are um, allocating the last of the local option sales tax, uh, recommending uh, the, um, the allocation of the last of local option sales tax. Capital projects um, over the past five years, and we've tried to put these into some categories, I think, to maybe um, help with comparison, is uh, equipment purchases, and that would be our vehicles, large trucks, anything like that. Um, uh, projects, and that can be uh, in our parks, our buildings, facilities, airport would be in that category as well. Pavement management, um, and those would be street improvement park uh, projects, parking lot. Um, in 2015, the proposal is for about $8 million in capital projects. Um, you can see in 2016 through 2019, there's some variation in there, but um, we are not really, our needs are not decreasing in capital projects. And again, this kind of shows, I think, the need and the deferred maintenance that we have. Um, and you see out to 2016 at this point, even out to 2019 at this point, we would project that we'd have about $6 million um, in projects for capital projects. Um, the rest, you know, the, just to remind folks of where we are in the budget process and budget, cal uh, budget calendar, um, we're here, of course, August 14th, and the uh, presentation of the mayor's proposed budget and capital improvement uh, plan. Uh, August 25th, and the, this, um, was, this is what's currently on the calendar, although I would recommend the Finance Committee maybe consider some additional time in this. Um, but the Finance Committee recommend action on the proposed tax levy. But um, as you can see below, in uh, we did get some, the, uh, there's been a change to um, the deadline for certifying the proposed levy to the county auditor. And that deadline has been ex extended to September 30th. It was pre previously September 15th. So it would allow the Finance Committee and the Council some additional time before having to, be, to uh, certify the property tax levy. And again, that date of September 30th is to certify the levy at the maximum amount. The council can, um, from up until the budget adoption, lower the levy, but you cannot raise the levy um, any higher than what you have set it at by set September 30th. And then typically in September, October, we have held some council workshops and done some public review. Um, then in November, we've had um, a review of the Municipal Utilities Commission and their budget, Rice Hospital, and the Wilmer HRA budget. And again, with the merger with Candy High County, that may change as well, I would note on that. Um, and we are targeting December 1st for the council to adopt the 2015 budget. And then we are required by December 31st to certify the tax levy to the county. And with that, we're certainly um, happy to take any questions. Um, some additional information to what's been electronically provided. There is um, simple kind of summary forms of the various funds, which just give the, the summary forms. And we were not able to do the electronic copies. Um, it's just a little difficult with the legal size. So we provided you a hard copy of the 2015 um, through 2019 proposed capital improvement program, as well as the equipment purchases. And I'd certainly be happy to answer any questions or walk through things in more detail um, as the committee would wish. Okay, I th one of the things, I, I don't want to get into a whole lot of details. Uh, if we have a detailed question, we can maybe answer it quickly, but this, today is, is big picture. So, questions from the console. Mr. Mayor. I have a question. What does community partners mean? 
We have, um, typically that's the community groups, and we've uh, we created that title a couple of years ago because they were kind of spread throughout the budget and it was difficult to kind of identify where they were funded in the, in the budget. But some of those are uh, Meals on Wheels, um, the request uh, that, that the city has funded for Meals on Wheels, the Humane Society, um, Wilmer Downtown Development would be in that category. And I think there's a, uh, last year the uh, Wilmer Area Multicultural Market Business Center was funded. And I marketing group was a small amount and as small, well. And the Community Marketing Coalition was a small dollar amount. Any outside, organiza outside organizations that receive funding from the city to provide services or to. That clarifies mm -hmm. it. I'm, I want to highlight one, th one thing for sure, and that's the local option sales tax. Um, it was mentioned, the mayor mentioned it, and Charlene mentioned it, but we will be using up the last of the local option sales tax funds in the 2015 budget. So that, that pot of money will be gone. So that's, that's something to remember. And the, other, the other thing I'd like to clarify and make sure everybody understands is the levy is going up by $61,000. But that is made up for, that increase is made up for by increased valuations due to new construction. Correct. Is that right? So, so the levy essentially is the same just the only difference is the new construction. Mr. Johnson. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Um, I don't know if this turned on, I guess. My question would be, um, you know, we've got five-year plan for capital improvements and so on, but based on our other discussions, I guess I'm curious to know uh, with all the deferred maintenance we expect on a lot of our buildings, and the fact that we're continuing falling behind on our road, uh, you know, street repairs and, and maintenance in the city, uh, how we're going to, you know, pay for that. I mean, what kind of, ta if we have any estimates on that and it, what we estimate tax increases in the future would be for those items in order to pay for them. Because here we're remaining flat and we're really, we have a lot more needs than what we're taking care of in our 2015 budget know that so mm -hmm. uh, I guess I'm just wondering if we if we've got any yeah. long-range figures or if somebody's working on that and I, uh, I'd just soon not have all of a sudden we look at the plans for next year and well we got to have a you know five percent tax increase to pay for this uh, and get shocked you know like that, that kind of fiscal shock if you would or yeah. sticker shock so I, I think I think the criteria that that staff was operating under was no increase in budget or in, in, in the tax levy. So, but I think one of the things that I'm gonna ask when we, at a finance committee meeting is just the sort of questions that you've been asking. Are we, are we kidding ourselves? Do we need to look at other funding sources? Do we need to look at tax increases? Do we, what do we need to do? And we do need more uh, specifics on you know, what we're falling short on, but that definitely will be a topic of discussion uh, very soon at the finance committee level. Well, my question goes to, you know, what have we done to date? I mean, I think they're, they're working on some, some things. I... Well, again, as the, you know, the mayor's direction was that he did not want to look at, a, at an increase in the levy. So we built our budget based upon that. But in terms of additional need and additional um, revenue, we've looked at, we have um, done some some had some internal discussions about what some other revenue sources could be. I think the key is for the council to understand is if we continue on the path that we are with capital and maintenance, I mean, without in without new revenues or increased revenues, I mean, we just we will not make progress on that backlog of make maintenance. I mean, we will continue to maintain what we have. Um, we will, con but we will also at the same time be getting further behind. I mean, we are increasing, you know, our street maintenance by about two hundred fifty thousand after years of not doing that. But that adds to the debt service load, um, and again, some of that, even that increase, is eaten up in the cost of projects by inflation. And so, I'm not sure that we're making a great deal of progress. And I can, um, and Steve Okins can kind of run through, you know, what the what an increase in the levy generates, and we've looked at the potential of things such as a utility franchise fee and what kind of revenue that could generate. Dave, if you could bring up slide five, and for those members that have it on their computer, that's the one that has the map with the, the city rates on it. Um, again, I mentioned that the city's rate is 33.98. 
to raise that one point would raise about $122,000 based on the valuations that we have. So a 10% increase in the city's rate only would generate about $366,000. Um, one of the things that we have and are continuing to look at is the funding mechanisms that we have for the payment management system. We have the Community Investment Fund and the Utility uh, Public Works Reserve Fund. Um, two years ago, uh, staff presented to the council a plan to implement by 2014, which was the first year that uh, an, a local option sales tax could have been uh, a third one could have been instituted uh, was part of a, a funding mechanism for streets. Um, but we will be having that discussion as far as the community investment fund and the public works reserve fund, which are the funding mechanisms for the, for the street uh, pavement management system at this point. Yeah, I understand that, but we were falling behind. That's my concern is, mm -hmm. you know, where we're going in the future. That's how we've done it in the past. And, uh, you know, I think we ought to crunch some numbers here, I think, personally. I mean, um, I don't know about the rest of the people in the council, but, you know, I look forward to about five or ten years with, mm -hmm. you know, my personal finances to have a better idea where I'm going to yeah. be, and, and especially in the event of unforeseen demands, which we're having. I mean, I don't know if we have a handle on our uh, deferred maintenance on our buildings yet. Uh, I think we should have a better handle on it, but I think we apparently we don't. And that concerns me. That's, uh, well, I know that the, uh, the capital improvement uh, staff committee that reviewed uh, did recommend, again, a 10 percent increase in the costs uh, for the pavement management system. Um, it had been in there at flat at two and a half million, and, and um, we did discuss that and, and proposed that and looked at it. Um, and again, uh, for every one point that you raise the tax levy uh, rate, you would generate about $122,000. I, I completely agree with Councilmember Johnson. I think we, we need to look at this. And, and I've had some discussions with some of these same sorts of things. What, where are we falling behind? Get some specifics, get some ideas, and then look at funding options um, and see where we go. But I think in, in fairness to them, the, the budget that, that they presented and the mayor worked on was to be a flat, no increase in the levy. So that's that's the premise that they were working on. Now, if we want to change that, that's our prerogative. I understand. And in our discussions, we have the revenues apparently just to meet our flat budget. That's what, mm -hmm. hence my concern yeah. about the next five yeah, years. Yeah, I, I think I think that's an accurate statement. I mean, we're you know, um, if you look even at the cash, you know, at the cash funding in 2015. I mean, we're proposing less in cash funded projects than we were proposing in 2014. Um, and, you know, at, even at last year's number of 1.2 million, there were projects that were pushed, you know, they continue to push it out. 1.2 million is not a lot in cash funded projects and, you know, 2.5, 2.7 is not a lot in street miles either. I mean, so we are, you know, we're living within our means, but in the long term, um, it's difficult to keep up with things because just as we, you know, get around, you know, just as we may improve one park, there's another park behind it that's not getting improved. And so we're not um, really catching up at a, in, a, in any sustainable way with maintenance. And some of this certainly goes back to, to years of unallotments and such with the state. And that was an area where the city, and we can go back and, and present and give you that information of what projects and things were deferred at the time, but there were quite a few projects and, and uh, equipment purchases that were deferred as well. Yeah, there was a 10-year history report that was uh, reviewed at that time mm -hmm. and available. Constantly. I think, just if I make one comment on that, I, I think the one thing where we haven't cut back, and, and it's to everyone's credit, is the level of service that that our employees and are providing to the citizens of Wilmer. We have not cut back in that area. Uh, our, our cutbacks have all come in the, in the area of capital. Councilmember Nelson. Just a clarification. I'm just wondering if Councilmember Johnson is suggesting that we ask staff to look at increasing the levy and looking at what we might be able to do with some of that increase as far as deferred maintenance, or what are we asking staff to do? I think what he's asking is, you know, are there revenue sources, whatever Besides they might be? What are we going to do in the next five years? Yeah. 
and you know, to catch up. I mean, yeah. one of them, the options might be in the next five years, might require some tax increases. What I'm concerned about is I don't want to have get hit with a sledgehammer. Right. I, uh, I agree. You know, yeah. uh, I want to have some forecast of what where we think we're going to be. I mean, whether it's based on estimates or not, I think we can estimate some of that stuff. What our I, needs. Are I just be. was hoping to clarify what we're asking staff. Yep. To come back with if yeah and we can come back to the finance committee with some additional information on you know revenue sources and you know again cost of inflation and where we think if we continue at the same rate I mean some of it is you know if you continue at the same rate um, just like the street programs if you, if you continue it now 2.7 million for five ten years inflation eats up some of that 2.7 million dollar increase Councilmember Amon no thanks for the discussion I as you know that's a passion of mine too I've been stating that for a few years and it seems like the number one complaint I get from people and constituents is the condition of the roads. Most people what they want is a good road to drive on that's not full of cracks and and bumps and hills and uh, just want to continue with their life and make sure that the uh, snow plows don't come by with too much snow and put it in the middle of their driveway. <laughs> but uh, the ongoing, uh, after reading the uh, report we got from our new city engineer, um, pretty much shows that we're we're falling behind on the seal coating, crack sealing. And I, I think it's a disservice for us not to uh, somehow address it. And I did bring it up at a previous meeting that we need to brainstorm as a group as how we're going to deal with this in a long-term setting. And I and here it's at the budget meeting again, and we still haven't done anything on it. I, I think it's time we move on it. But I personally feel that um, I might not be right, but I think most people would understand if, there, uh, if we were going to do a special assessments to everybody in the community to bring our current maintenance up to the point where it would help prevent the further deterioration of their street in front of their house and make it last longer so we don't have to re-improve it, that they may be supportive of that. If they can physically see the uh, something being done, knowing that their tax dollars are going for or something that's going to make them save, save them money in the long term and make that road last longer, I think they'd be supportive of it. And I think that might be the direction we should consider, at least get uh, maybe the public's opinion on it. It may be more palatable that way. I hear what you're saying, and that was going to be a topic. And one of our, our special work sessions was pavement management. Now, actually, there's not a whole lot of funding different uh, options available on, on streets. You have to do some amount of assessment. Um, even if you wanted to say everything was going to come out of taxes, you still have to assess at least 20%. And, and so anyway, there, there, a number of things have been looked at, but that's going to be a topic that we're going to discuss in depth. Thank you. Councilmember Christensen. <clears throat> As far as facility maintenance, you know, looking at the park budget being pretty much flat, I know um, yeah. if you looked at park equipment and the equipment we have in our parks, um, as far as what is the replacement cycle on that, we have what, about 35 or 36 parks about that we have equipment at, and um, is that replacing that, that equipment over, you know, we're looking at equipment is 35 years old in some of our parks as well uh, and then getting to the assessment policies I understand you right Councilmember Anderson that that's going to be a special uh, council session to discuss the assessment policy whether it's assessment policy or whatever we want to talk about about the pavement management you know how aggressive do we want to be and then how do we want to fund it what are our options yeah yes we actually, um, to Councilmember DeBleek's question, I mean, in terms of park maintenance and equipment, it is about 37 parks. We have previously been budgeting about $30,000 in capital improvements for those parks. We have, in the 2015 budget, increased that to 100000 The request was actually $200,000, um, but we've uh, increased that by to 100000 There's also some additional... Um, dollars in the capital improvement fund for some very specific things within the park system, such as you're replacing backstops at Swanson Fields. Um, there's quite a bit of uh, maintenance that needs to occur 
um, at the Dorothea Aquatic Center. That's just uh, routine and scheduled maintenance for the slide and such. I mean, it's a 10-year-old uh, mm -hmm. facility, and it's the recommended maintenance at 10 years, and so there's about 60 some thousand dollars in that. Um, but again, that, that, that certainly is an area, and, and the park, uh, the phase one of the park study called that out as the, uh, the equipment and the kind of level of the equipment and the age of the equipment in that. And um, in anticipation of the uh, park study that's, that's the master planning that's going on, that's, under, that's underway now, um, we've increased that funding, but I suspect that we will again have information given to us that our parks in some ways, you know, we've fallen behind on that maintenance too to catch up and such. And so we're trying to do that in 2015 um, and 2016, I think is 100,000. And I think in the um, further out in the capital years, we tried to increase that dollar amount to 150,000, 200,000 and work our way up to a, to a more substantial uh, amount to uh, replace and repair equipment in the parks. Yeah. And certainly for the council to discuss at least. Councilmember Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, some comments and some questions uh, on the uh, CIP. Uh, I see you've got under rebuild orange infield a replace cinder warning track for fifty thousand dollars, and along with uh, let's see backstop replacement for five fields at Swanson Field. You know our uh, softball is just the numbers are going way way down. They don't even have a, a girls softball uh, league this year. Um, is, isn't that something that can be maybe pushed aside and maybe those dollars could be put elsewhere uh, since our everything is flat? Um, that's one comment. Um, the Taunton Field Storm Shelter for $100,000, which is a federal match, where did that come from and, and what, what is it? Um, that project is to look at putting in a storm shelter. I mean, there's some FEMA dollars that could be available to the um, to the city and the county to apply for that and to have a essentially a FEMA shelter as part of the Taunton Stadium. And then part of that would maybe allow us to build some storage some storage facility as well in there. And that's because you have a large kind of it's kind of a you know it's a potential safety issue is that the that the amount of attendance at those games and the large number and if you have a storm event and such you don't have a shelter for people. So possibility to do something like that. Is it mandated? I mean, do we, do we have to have that? It's not mandated. I mean, I think it's just, um, you know, a public safety, potential public safety concern. Yes. And so it's looking at trying to maybe leverage some FEMA dollars and be able to do something um, along those lines. I mean, it's certainly, I mean, again, and again, these are the proposed capital improvements in this, and they're here for the council's discussion. In terms of the other projects, um, uh, Steve Brizen, I couldn't be here this evening, so I don't have, I'm not sure I have the specifics on that, but you know, Swanson Field is used um, not just for softball, but it is also used for Little League and baseball as well. So, I mean, and some of those um, items have been deferred for a number of years already, and, and, those, and they've been requested by the Baseball Association for a number of years. I believe the Orange Field, that the discussion in the committee level was that that field is being used more and more because of the uh, stingers and the use of the uh, Taunton Stadium, and so that's the secondary baseball field that's being used more and more and in the cinder track around the outfield is is what's being proposed here to be replaced and updated okay well it's a lot of money 50 grand to do that I noticed right below the uh, Taunton Fields storm shelter is the Taunton Stadium storage slash office restroom addition um, for hundred fifty thousand dollars is that is that not could that not be incorporated with the uh, field storm shelter? I mean, it, some of it could be, and, and the the, um, the source that's identified there for funding is other because that would be the expectation would be, would be that that would be repaid by the stingers through their lease. Okay. Um, but the city would have to do the project and yeah. essentially front. And that you know, money. we're going to have a whole work session on just capital improvements, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 mm -hmm. too. So. I bet I'd like to understand what they are. Some of these are before yeah, we get the sure. work session. I mean, there's top dress soccer fields at the West Wind Park. Is that something new that's going to be going over there? Or? Uh, the uh, those fields were used for soccer in this past year because there's been a need for that, um, and so I think this is a kind of maintenance and and such to uh, be able to continue to use those as soccer fields because there's a need for soccer fields. Okay, I see. We also put in there the uh, six grand for the canine program. Have we decided we're going to do that, or I mean, the sheriff's department already has it. I know they talked about sharing, but uh, I mean um, this would be a shared program with the sheriff. The sheriff is um, the sheriff uh, has has retired their dog as well, I believe. Captain Feltz giving me the nod, so that do dog has been retired. Um, it would be a shared program, and then there is a uh, potential donor in the community that would also fund a portion of this. So it would be a shared program between this. Would be the city's share. The reason I bring it up is, I mean, 
we pay county taxes, and, and, and you know, the county had the dog. Um, my, my thoughts are they could keep it, because we're, we're, we already are paying into the county for it. All of us, property taxes. Um, second page, uh, just a couple questions. The city hall thin clients, I mean, what, what is that? Um, that's a computer, it's a, it's a technology um, upgrade, and thin clients are kind of a replacement for the um, desktop uh, uh, hardware and such, and allow us to, uh, to essentially have a, a slightly cheaper machine, um, and then the um, programs and, and the, the programs run kind of via the network or via the cloud system. And I see that to have the hardware requirements that was funded under other also what meaning um, the proposal there would be and again this is trying to maximize the revenues would be to, to take a look at using the um, dollar set aside in the cable reserve fund for the to use that as for information technology for that project okay take it out of rack eights yeah general or reserve out, fund out of actually. those reserves okay. And then city hall permit system what is that um, that would be a new system uh, for permits Electronic system permits for everything? building permits and parade. Yep, building permits primarily. Building permits primarily yep. for building and zoning. Okay, well maybe that could be explained uh, further at the uh, yep when we have the CIP meeting. Certainly can do that. That was it. Thank you. That's it. Other comments or questions? Okay. Um, I'd like some input as to what we may want to have as work sessions. I've indicated pavement management uh, will certainly be one. Capital improvement plan will be one. And we will have one where we have the budgets from the utilities, uh, the hospital, and the uh, HRA. So, and probably at that one we could in incorporate other things into that one as well. But I want to hear what, what the council wants for work sessions. Okay, I guess I'm council member Nelson. Just a question, did we do a separate one for community or did, was that incorporated in with? That probably would be incorporated in the one where we do the, the right. budgets and from the utilities. And that's what I was wondering, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then we'll kind of proceed along those lines and we can certainly uh, adapt and adjust as necessary. Councilmember Christensen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just a comment, and I'm glad that you, that we got a list of all the, uh, the inventory of vehicles presently used by the city. Um, I didn't realize we had that many vehicles. <laughs> There's a lot of vehicles there. Okay. Anything else? If not, then we're going to uh, we're going to go we're going to refer to the finance committee itself to do uh, the finance committee work. We've got some some business on the finance committee, and so you're welcome to stay, or you can. Oh, nuts! Thank you. I can't get to my finance committee. You know what? All right. Did we have any public comment? Okay. Then we'll go to the air conditioning reallocation funding request. And that would be John. Yeah, maybe if you want to come up, you can use the podium mic. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. The uh, air conditioning unit for the basement of the city hall, which is currently rented by ad additional tenants or other tenants, um, has failed. And beyond that, it's got uh, the old style Freon in it, which in a few years is gonna be obsolete and no longer allowed. So we've had to allocate a few uh, dollars that were in another account that were gonna be unused for this particular year. And uh, we reallocated those to cover that uh, equipment replacement. So is the work the work in process, or where where are we with the? Yeah, uh, that is correct. Okay. Uh, yesterday, I believe they started. 
I'll make a motion to approve the reallocation of funds for the emergency air conditioning repair. Second. We have a motion and a second to reallocate the funds. Is there a discussion? Councilmember Fagerly. So is this for uh, the area of the mid Minnesota commission? Uh, yes, that's correct. That's, uh, I think there's, that's one of a couple tenants down there, I believe, but uh, specifically them, yes. Will that cool the city's portion too of the basement or just their area? I believe that's the entire basement. Entire basement. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Um, do you want to review the upcoming uh, future agenda items for us? Sure, Mr. Uh, Chairman. The uh, future agenda items are that there are, were some uh, liquor license violations and uh, according to council policy, they need to come before the finance committee and explain what measures that they will be doing um, to prevent this t uh, from happening in the future. Uh, they were originally scheduled for Monday, but with the rescheduling of the meeting to today, um, they will be coming in on the 25th. Um, city auditorium funding, um, there was originally $250,000. Now that bids are in, uh, along with the engineering is slightly over that, so we'll have some recommendations on uh, increasing that funding to meet the obligations that, uh, uh, so the council can award those. Uh, the multifamily waste treatment schedule and definitions was referred to the Finance Committee from the Community Development Committee. Uh, we have met and had some discussions on uh, the ordinance and the definition and uh, the procedures that are used to bill uh, multi-units with one meter, and we'll have some uh, information for you then. And the 2013 departmental overages will be kind of a review. Uh, one of the audit findings was that the council at least take action on that. Uh, past practice has been to kind of handle that at the end of the year. Uh, this will work in well with the budget discussion. Okay, thank you. Is there any old business? Is there any new business? If not, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. It's all moved. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.